Believe it or not, 2022 is almost over and that means it's time for some best of the year lists. But before I reveal my top 10 absolute favorite movies of the year, I want to talk about 10 other great movies that have been overlooked and are definitely not getting the love and attention they deserve. So here are top 10 most underrated movies of 2022. Weird, the Al Yankovic story is easily one of the most entertaining movies I've seen all year. It's a satirical biopic that isn't afraid to make fun of genre cliches and doesn't take itself too seriously. Written by Weird Al himself, this film is as hilarious, vibrant, and over the top as you would expect. And when I say over the top in this context, I mean it as a compliment. I would honestly be pretty disappointed if this was a typical biopic. Instead, it's a ridiculously fun, self-aware comedy that's very loosely based on Weird Al's life, and it fits his sense of humor perfectly. Daniel Radcliffe is fantastic as the lead. He clearly had a great time filming this, and it's actually one of the best performances of his career so far. The cast in general is excellent, including Evan Rachel Wood as Madonna, Rain Wilson as Dr. Demento, Weird Al himself is actually in it, and so many out-of-control cameos that I just don't want to spoil. It's unfortunate this movie is only available on the Roku channel, and that's probably the main reason why not that many people have seen it, because I really do think it's one of the best comedies of the year, and one I would definitely recommend watching with your friends. If you're tired of those never-ending formulaic biopics, Weird the Al Yankovic story just might be the lighthearted biographical parody you need in your life right now. If you're looking for some truly hidden gems, check out Next Exit, a road trip dramedy set in a world where ghosts are real and the existence of the afterlife is no longer in question. One of the dark sides of all of this is a new controversial medical procedure that allows people to die peacefully on their own terms while also potentially being able to track them in the afterlife to gather more information. Our two leads, Rose and Teddy, don't see much of a life for themselves in this world. They've given up on finding authentic connections with other people and being accepted for who they are. They are tired of dealing with their personal issues and other people's bullshit, so like many of them, they volunteer for the procedure but end up sharing a rental car on their way to their final destination. The movie is a beautiful blend of dark comedy and introspective drama with a dash of romance and it's the type of story that will leave you contemplating life. The two lead characters are essentially lost souls and initially pretty much hate each other, but as they're stuck on this journey together, they slowly begin to open up. If you're a fan of movies, they that use a paranormal element in an otherwise small, grounded story as a way to examine humanity and loneliness, I think you'll really enjoy Next Exit. And Hollywood, please put Rahul Kohli in more movies. Now for something completely different, I want to draw your attention to Apollo 10 and a half, a space age childhood directed by none other than Richard Linklater. I had no idea this movie even existed until one of you recommended it to me a few days ago, and it has been on Netflix since April, so thank you for that. It's an animated coming-of-age film set in 1969, and it's a fictionalized take on the director's own childhood. It's a story about a fourth grader who becomes the first person to land on the moon, but of course, as this is a link later film it's not really about that it's a movie filled with small details and observations with hopes dreams and nostalgia that really capture a time in history from a personal and playful perspective. I just love the way the director finds these small moments that may sound insignificant, but actually end up making all the difference when it comes to the warmth and authenticity of the story. It was such a joy to watch this, and I definitely appreciated the animation style as well, which was a great fit for the lighthearted and slightly melancholic tone of this movie. After watching it, I am now nostalgic for a time I've never experienced because it happened way before I was even born. 
But Apollo 10 and a half really pulled me in, making me feel like I knew exactly what growing up in the suburbs of Houston was like back in the 60s, making me feel like I completely understood who this boy was as if he was my friend. And that's the power of Richard Linklater's sincere and creative storytelling. And speaking of creativity, I am so excited to tell you about today's sponsor, Skillshare. If you're looking to level up your creative skills or pick up some new ones, Skillshare is the place for you. This online learning community has thousands of inspiring classes for you to explore, and with new premium classes added every week, you will always have something new to discover. Do you have a hobby that you've been putting off because you don't know where to start? Want to get inspired and add some creativity to your work? Looking to learn about starting your own YouTube channel? Or maybe you're just looking for new ways to improve your life? Skillshare has the right class for you at any level. I have used Skillshare to learn more about video editing, color grading, lighting for videos, cleaning up audio, and there are always more classes that I'm interested in. Courses like Sean Morton's Advanced Adobe Premiere Pro Masterclass are a perfect way for me to expand my knowledge and get inspired to try new things. But if you're just starting your own channel, classes like Scott Liu's Film Yourself 101 will get you set up with everything you need to know before filming your first video. The first 1,000 people to use my link below will get a one-month free trial of Skillshare. So what are you waiting for? Join Skillshare today and let me know what you're excited to start learning about next. And thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Continuing with the theme of understated personal movie experiences, you should definitely watch After Sun. This may seem like just another simple, heartwarming vacation film, but After Sun is actually deeply moving and there's a lot going on under the surface. The story explores a father-daughter relationship through video footage of their vacation together. An 11-year-old Sophie and her 30-year-old father are at a small resort in Turkey as she is facing adolescence and he is struggling with finding himself at this stage of his life. It's the kind of introspective film that may not have all that much going on as far as the plot goes, but more than makes up for it from the emotional and character perspective. Something that immediately stood out to me in After Sun is how genuine this father-daughter relationship feels and how natural the two lead performances are. Frankie Corio and Paul Mascal are both simply exceptional in their roles in a way that feels very honest. It's also a movie that comes off a lot more authentically 90s than most modern movies that are set in the 90s, and it's bound to make you revisit some of your own memories as it examines the perspective of childhood memories and how they don't necessarily grasp the complexity of what's going on with people around us at that age. After Sun is a movie that stays with you long after you watch it, and as you begin to process it, you uncover new layers that make you fall in love with it more and more. Now, I'm sure you already knew there were going to be horror movies on this list. So to properly open up this section, we need to talk about Fresh, a dark comedy horror film that is just as funny as it is disturbing. Noah is a young woman who is very frustrated with dating apps and the disappointing dates she ends up on because of them. So when she meets a charm, though slightly awkward man at the grocery store, she decides to try doing things the old-fashioned way and gives him her number. Everything seems to be going great, the two of them really hit it off, but when Steve surprises her with a weekend getaway trip, things take a much more sinister turn. I don't want to spoil this movie for anyone who doesn't know what it's about yet, so I'll just leave the plot at that. But trust me, you will be squirming in no time. It gets pretty gross. The great thing about Fresh is that it works really well as a straightforward horror movie, but for those of you interested in digging deeper, it also works as an allegory for modern dating. Sebastian Stan does his best Patrick Bateman impression, and the chemistry between him and Daisy Edgar Jones is undeniable, which makes for a fascinating character dynamic later on. 
I am always happy to see a movie that knows how to walk the line between being darkly funny and full on creepy. And Fresh is definitely one of those. Entertaining, unsettling, and deliciously weird. And speaking of weird, Resurrection is one crazy, demented psychological horror film. It's easily the most divisive movie on this list, and when you see it, you'll understand why. Resurrection is all about control, and it's a movie that grabs hold of you in the beginning and doesn't let go until the very end. The story is about Margaret, a single mother and a successful independent woman who is unexpectedly faced with someone from her past. As that encounter brings up past trauma and memories she's been trying to suppress, her life begins to fall apart and now she is willing to do anything to regain control and protect her daughter. While all of this sounds like a pretty standard psychological thriller, Trust me, leave any expectations you have for this movie behind because it goes to some bizarre and highly unsettling places that are more twisted than even I could imagine. So I guess I should warn you, in case you're easily disturbed, that Resurrection is not for the faint of heart. But if you're looking for a messed up take on the woman unraveling slash stalker subgenre, this is definitely the movie for you. Rebecca Hall delivers one of her most intense performances with an Oscar-worthy monologue. Tim Roth is at his absolute creepiest here, and some parts of this movie are truly chilling to the point of being a bit too much for some viewers. When it comes to psychological horror, Resurrection tops the list of the most disturbing movies of the year. As for a more emotional and meditative take on horror, I have to once again bring up You Won't Be Alone, which I talked about in my Best Movies of 22 So Far video, halfway through the year. If folk horror that feels like a dark fairy tale sounds like your kind of thing, you cannot miss this one. Set in 19th century Macedonia, this movie is about a shape-shifting witch who accidentally kills a peasant and takes on the peasant's form to see what life is like in her skin. As she experiences humanity with all its ups and downs, happiness and pain, beauty and cruelty, the movie becomes a stunning, melancholy meditation on life itself. Compared to the other two horror movies on this list, this one is definitely nowhere near as scary, but emotional horror films like this, ones I can really connect to, always hold a special place in my heart and I know a lot of you appreciate this approach to the genre as well. The film's gorgeous cinematography really creates a unique mood and tone that stay with you long after you watch it and it's another one of those films that will make you contemplate life. While it won't be a film for everyone, those who enjoy it will really love it, even though it might break your heart along the way. I feel like documentaries are an underrated and underwatched genre by definition, so I wanted to highlight my favorite documentary that I've seen this year, Fire of Love. It follows the lives and careers of two volcanologists, Katya and Maurice Kraft, who loved two things in life, each other and volcanoes. This documentary has two great things going for it. It features insane, terrifying footage of volcanoes and the wholesome, adorable, romantic relationship between the two people exploring them. I could not take my eyes off these two fearless people traveling the world and getting way too close for comfort to the volcanoes they were studying. Honestly, I regret not seeing it on the big screen because so much of this footage looks cinematic and even otherworldly. Add to that the calm, soothing narration of Miranda July and some well-placed humor, and what you have here is a beautiful, unforgettable, somewhat poetic experience that really leaves you in awe of this side of nature. I don't really have much more to say about this other than if there is one documentary from 2022 that I would easily recommend to literally everyone, it's Fire of Love. It's simply stunning, and the only thing that could have made it better is if it was longer, because it definitely left me wishing 
for more. Now, these next two movies are both at the top of my list for slightly different reasons. First of all, by far the most underrated movie of 2022 is still the outfit. I am so surprised that this one is still flying way under the radar and I still maintain that most people would enjoy it a lot. This one location crime thriller really knows how to make use of dialogue and setting to maintain tension and mystery. The movie is set in 1950s Chicago in a small tailor shop where Leonard, an English tailor, makes expensive suits for the only people around who can afford them, gangsters. What could even go wrong with that, right? The twists and turns keep coming, the suspense is growing, and every character has their own agenda as they're trying to end up on top of this situation. In short, what we have here is an incredibly gripping, fascinating, stylish, and smartly written gangster thriller, and I don't even like gangster movies. If you still haven't seen the outfit, you are definitely missing out. The mind games and the tight pacing makes it fly by. The entire cast is great, including Mark Rylance delivering one of my favorite performances of his to date. And the filmmakers really know how to use the contained setting and the time period effectively. Plus, after keeping you guessing the entire time, the payoff in this film really delivers. All of that makes The Outfit one of the easiest movies on this list to recommend to everyone. The last film I want to talk about is Park Chan-wook's decision to leave. There are two reasons why I'm putting it at the top of my list. The first one is that despite getting a lot of praise at film festivals, the film never really reached a wider audience and it definitely deserves more attention. And the second is that it's undeniably one of the best movies of the year, sitting right outside of my top 10 at number 11 and I just can't not talk about it. Decision to Leave is somewhat of a puzzle box film. It's a romantic mystery and could easily be described as the director's take on the neo-noir genre. It's a story about a detective who starts falling for the way widow of a man whose death he's investigating, even though this widow is quickly becoming the prime murder suspect. Watching it kind of feels like you're wandering inside a maze, and I mean that in a good way. The entire time you're looking for clues, you're looking for connections, because it's very obvious how deliberate every visual choice here is. Park Chan-wook's precise direction and the visuals in general are the strongest things about this film, closely followed by the performances. But aside from it looking gorgeous every step of the way, there are so many details to pay attention to in every shot that it makes me want to re-watch this movie just to absorb more of them. There are plenty of visual motifs, including the way color and texture are used, so many visual parallels and match cuts. Because this story has to do with the complexities of communication and understanding the other person as well as perception, there is a lot of playing with reflections and focus or even placing characters and shots in an unusual way. This is undeniably beautiful, memorable filmmaking filled with interesting choices that communicate so much just with the visuals alone. And it is simply a must watch for any cinephile out there. But I'm sure there were plenty more underrated hidden gems this year, so I would love for you guys to let me know what you think are the most underappreciated and overlooked movies of 2022. And of course, let me know your thoughts on my picks and how many of those would make your list as well. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate every single one of you and I will see you very soon in my next video. Bye.